So there's areas in which, um, like in math mathematics, which we've been making progress. I mean, like, you know, a lot of us think that there's, we've, we've already discovered everything we need to know about mathematics. It's not true. There's been uh, theories, like uh, in number theory, the ABC conjecture, with Patrick Robot from here, we'll be discussing about it. And I think it's very interesting. Put your hands again for Patrick. <laughs> Patrick's actually doing a, um, uh, like a, a, like a, I think a master's or a, a, a PhD in something like that, in, in, in um, AI. Yeah. So he's going to be working under David Dow at Monash University over the next year. All right. Uh, so as Adam said, my talk's on the ABC conjecture. Uh, so I'll write this conjecture down and then explain what the words mean. Uh, so, the, uh, as Adam said, maths is making a hell of a lot of progress. Uh, I, I read on Wikipedia that fountain of all knowledge that uh, you talk about exponential graphs, the number of mathematical papers published in the 1940s was about 30,000. Uh, in the 1990s, it was over a million. <coughs> so, you know, and the curve is exponential in the number of papers. Now, that might not mean that the number of insights <laughs> is exponential. Perhaps, uh, you know, they're padding. Well, maybe not, I don't know. I'd like to believe that we're not and we're actually creating exponential knowledge. Anyway, so A, B, C, K prime. Uh, A plus B equals, sorry. And uh, red. A, B, C. So this is a horrible equation. Um, oh, sorry. Can you guys read that? Okay. No, no. I just Look at all the red thing. Of course. All right. Here we go. Sorry. <laughs> So it's a good thing you mentioned that because I made a typo. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working on it for years, though. <laughs> so, uh, so the progress <coughs> in maths was that this uh, equation or inequation was recently claimed to have been proven by Professor Shinichi Mochizuki, uh, in who is a Japanese mathematician. Uh, the proof is over 500 pages long, so I think, for reasons of time constraints, I can't give the proof. But I can at least explain what's being proved and why it's important. Uh, what's being proved... Uh, well, I'll say why it's important. Why it's important is because it entails uh, t 10 other uh, conjectures and number theory. Uh, including Fermat's Last Theorem. So it's a big deal in number theory if the proof is correct. If we're proven this, then we've proven 10 other things. And what do those other things prove? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, well, I don't know. This is maths. This is maths. Okay. It, goes, it goes on forever. But, uh, yeah, uh, so. Oh, uh, good. You can actually read that. Good. Uh, so this, so let me read the conditions. What they're saying is that there's a finite number of triples uh, satisfying these properties. Uh, Co-prime means that A, B, and C share no common factors. So there's no multi so they're not both divisible by two or five or whatever. A plus B equals C, I think you can figure that out for yourself. And uh, there's this funny notation, rad, 
a, b, c. The radical of a number is the product of its distinct prime factors. So there's this thing called the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, which says that every that each number can be uniquely decomposed into a number of prime factors. So, for example, uh, 10 is equal to 2 times 5. Uh, and, you know, 20 is equal to 2 times 2 times 5. So what the radical says is throw out the duplicates. So rad 20 uh, is equal to rad 10. is equal to 2 times 5. And rad, I don't know, uh, 2 to the power of a million is equal to 2. Uh, so this is saying that the... Yeah, so this is saying that most of the time, this radical thing, it's not like this. It's usually pretty big. And in particular, it's bigger than C, where uh, A, B, and C are all being multiplied together. So they don't, if a, a big prime divides A or B, then a big prime doesn't divide C. Uh, no common factors, right. Uh, yeah. So, but then, I mean, there might be two different big primes. Like uh, a million and one might divide A, and a million and three might divide C. But that doesn't happen most of the time, is what this says. Uh, yeah, so, any questions? <laughs> <laughs> well, just regarding what we were talking about beforehand, I mean, yeah. I don't know if anyone's seen John Hawkins, the end of science, but he's got a pretty famous book on the, the future of science, which mm. is obviously future of the future is yeah. science. And he's saying it's basically science, well, the scientific problems we're facing, the physical science or mathematics, are just too complex now. We run up against a brick wall and you know, either we can't, or we, that's why a lot of scientists are resorting to maybe fanciful theories, maybe string theories not really true or, or it's only a, a mathematical game. He, he says we're playing mathematical games and he's also made the same point with mathematics the mm -hmm. end of proof, he said, look, proofs are becoming mind-endingly complex that no single human can understand. And so it's either he's saying it's the end of science for humans, maybe it's the beginning of science for machines. But mm -hmm. Is that the same problem that that's facing? Maybe we just run out of brain cells. You know? I, I think we that's... We just don't have enough floating operations in our heads. I think that's a very good point. Certainly for the proof of this, uh, it's way too complicated. Uh, almost for anyone to absorb, other than the guy who invented it. Uh, so, I mean, I, I don't think all maths proofs are like that. There was one that, that uh, whose title was the name of the proof, whose abstract said the theorem is proved, and that went for only two pages. So that guy isn't one who beats about the bush. But I think in general, you may be right. Well, it's not my theory. It's all the general. Yeah. yeah um, since nature produces wonderful intelligence without complex mathematics, and many people are working in that direction today in AI uh, without very complex mathematics, why do you think that um, we can get terrific advances in AI through complex mathematics? Uh, well, I would dispute that nature doesn't use complex mathematics. I think it uses exceedingly complicated mathematics, uh, from physics to biology to uh, um, chemistry. Uh, you know, to intelligence. I mean, you know. It just uses it blindly. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, right. It uses it blindly. But that doesn't mean the mathematics itself isn't complicated. Your last question. Okay, I'm just going to sort of picking up on that previous question. Um, <coughs> is it that from a, from a the challenge point of view with things getting more complex, is it that what we've actually convinced ourselves or we've conned ourselves that we've been really smart? when all we've really done is pick the low-hanging fruit as a species. Um, and now we're running up to the edge where all that low-hanging fruit's gone and now we have to use our brains. That's all in theory. Yeah, it's a good, I mean, the complexity of science is, a, is sort of the theme of this talk. Uh, I, 
I think that it's not just now that we've that we've struggled. Uh, for example, general relativity was said to be so complicated that Arthur Eddington was asked, is it true that only three people in the world understand general relativity? And he paused for a second and said, who is the third? <laughs> uh, so it might be that the proof of this is like general relativity, only three people understand it or only one person understands it. Uh, I don't know. I think overall that we've still got a bit of low-hanging fruit to go, or at least fruit of this kind where I can explain the problem quickly even if I can't explain the solution. So we can, you, we can sort of plug things into other people's knowledge bases. Excellent. Thank you very much. Now we've got Mark Ciotola.